Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. Another day here finishing out the Reptarium expansion, or as I say now, the Reptarium. Uh, Stuart's in the Anaconda cage, hoping to get this going here later on today. A uh, lot of work to do, a lot of little work, and this is the last day that we have everyone here helping. So uh, let's hope we get a lot done, that's for sure. Let me know in the comments what part have you enjoyed the most, uh, and if you're gonna come visit us, again, opening weekend, March 13th, Friday the 13th, all weekend's gonna be amazing. So uh, let's just jump right into it, because we've got a lot to do. All right, so the anaconda cage is pretty much set. We have to actually core through the cement floor to run all the drains. That way we don't have to you know, take out buckets of water or something like that. So we have to literally core right through for this and the alligator tank. So now we're actually set and ready to start filling up the water here in the anaconda cage. Let's go ahead and take a look at kind of how the piping goes downstairs so that it'll be really easy to drain so we can keep this cage really clean. So right up here above me is the anaconda cage. The pipe comes down here, just kind of runs along here. Here's my ball valve. So I can literally just shut this now to fill it because if it's open, it's gonna drain out. So now I'm just gonna shut that. It comes along here, has enough of a pitch to come down and drain over here. Then we actually have salt and peppers, the exact same thing through the floor over here. Got the ball valve, this one's closed. So it's ready to go ahead and get filled up and then it comes and it drains right into the system. Really nice, tight, you know, it looks really good so we don't have to worry about, you know, bumping our heads and stuff like that. Well, I'm kind of short anyways, but let's go and uh, get this water in there. Hopefully no leaks. Uh, I am so excited about this thing. We got it all cleaned up. So let's go ahead and just put the water on and uh, see in about an hour or so we'll be able to turn the pump on and see if it all works. It's day three, there's a lot of finer detail that needs to be done. So around the window, especially here where the door is, we've got to cut the trim down. We, we, we want to get some M1 or silicon and do our coloring down here. But these big gaps like this right near the door aren't good. There is an option, we could fill it with foam and then we could smear the M1 on and then color on top of that. We're actually better off to cut it down a lot lower so people's heels aren't going to hit that. They're going to hit the trim before they're going to hit, hit the top of the rock because that is the weakest joint when you're just doing a repair. But if, if it could be folded all the way over, which it can't because the window's there, the door's there, then you have to do it like this. Okay, next up is to work on the glass in the iguana cage. That is gonna be huge because uh, Lori did all of the kind of smoothing things out, covering all the joints. So now we're gonna try to put these mammoth pieces of glass on. So uh, wish us luck. big things I've had and it's great when you're working around a lot of other guys there's a bunch of carpenters here today and yesterday and they've got some other tools so everyone's got their ideas on how to cut this this works fantastic but um, the oscillating 
power saw, the little battery driven oscillating saw is fantastic. I, I find this a little bit more accurate for me, but maybe that's just because that's what I've been using for 20 years. But the oscillating saw, when you've got these real thick bits like here, okay, that makes it really hard to get through when you're in a tight little spot with the knife. But that saw actually works well, so put that into the, the tool list of what will make installing Universal Rocks a lot easier. All right, it's time to try out the Anaconda case. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug her in, see what happens. All right, so there it is, guys. Uh, that's actually awesome. I mean, that's almost perfect for what I want. I didn't want too much water flow because obviously I was going to spend a lot of time. Obviously, the water level will be up to here, not down there. We're just testing out. We're going to let this run, make sure there's no leaks or anything like that. But uh, that is amazing. So we definitely ran into a first big, big problem here. Uh, this enclosure is actually built in two parts. The top half, you can see it bows out like a banana. It's about an inch off. Well, we can't get our door or our glass in with it being an inch out. So somehow we're gonna have to figure out how to get that top an inch in. Uh, I, I really don't know what we're gonna do. This to here, even though it's tilted this way, it's straight, it's right here. This doesn't look as bad as that. Like that looks like, you can see that, you see where that yep. trim goes like, yep. Wow. Yep. See what I'm saying? So this might not even be that bad because this at least looks relatively straight. It's built, I don't care if it's tilted that way, it doesn't matter. But it's just right here, you can see where this thing just goes. Before we even do this, can you, can you try to tap a little bit? Just see yeah. if something's gonna happen. Give it a chance to tap and just see if we get any movement at all. I'd say as high up as you can, yeah. Definitely gonna be a gap, but that's all right. It is what it is. Now that we filled up the anaconda cage, we know it works. We actually have to drain it because Stuart has to go and kind of finish everything up to get it set. Then we'll fill it back up, and this time we can bring it all the way up and just keep it running. So, uh, and then get that whole cycle going. So, but now we're draining the tank. This is where we break glass, hit chip glass. So real gently, just pick up and move over. I'll let you do this pull them out. You move on. Okay, you're good. We have to get this in. Now we have to shim everything where the seams are good, right? And so this could take one or two times doing things. Okay, because this tank, the anaconda cage, came in two pieces, what we've had to do is bring one piece and butt up the next piece to it. So this joint all the way along the front, which is at the right at the front door is tricky and has to be precise. So we're using just some screws. Then we'll use our M1 here. We'll use our colors, colors here. And we'll go over all of this, just not covering the screw heads. When the M1's all dried around the seams, then we'll pull the screws out. And if we have to do a little bit more touching up, we will. But we're just using the screws to hold 
the flap of the um, rock surface tight to the other rock surface. Okay, so guys, straighten out that side. We're way off. Yeah. I just got down for something. Gently pick up and move towards me. Very, 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 very slow. Move your hand out. Move your hand out. I'm just trying to keep it clapping. And that's fine. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. <laughs> Guys, I ain't gonna lie to you, that was really tough because we had a big bow in the cage. We had to just kind of fix it to where we pulled it in, sucked it in, got it pretty close. There's still a little bit of a gap, but uh, we'll kind of do the seal now that you kind of help things out a lot. So uh, that was one of the problems I wasn't expecting to be so difficult, uh, but it looks like it's gonna be awesome. And I tell you what, with that glass in there, it's pretty darn cool. Anaconda cage is looking really good with all of this moss and stuff like that, and it's definitely getting good. And, uh, so here now uh, into the build a bit, I gotta take a second and just kind of give you my emotional status. I mean, it's uh, it's been a wild, exciting, exhausting, mentally draining handful of days. I mean, it's gone so well and I'm so thankful for everyone that showed up from the install group to the people that stayed way beyond working their butts off. Without them, there's no way I could possibly have done what I did. But. Uh, I'm mentally drained, I cannot even tell you. There's just been, every day, there's so many things going on. I mean, there's 10 projects. We gotta get this done, that done, this done. And we only have, today is the last day that everyone is here, so uh, we're trying to wrap up as much as we can. After that, it's just Lori, my crew, and myself, and, and we have to do it all ourselves. Don't get me wrong, we did so much more than I even anticipated we would, so we are way ahead of schedule. But I'm not gonna lie to you guys, as excited as it is, I am exhausted. I can't wait till I get a little bit more energy in a few days and come back and really kind of breathe it in and live it again because uh, wow, what an amazing experience. But I couldn't be more thankful and more happy with the way it's turning out. Certainly wasn't an easy job, but we finally have the iguana cage basically done. We've got to just clean it up, a couple little minor things, obviously some foliage and stuff like that, but the iguana cage is cool. I love the way this looks. When you're over here in the old part and you're walking through, you see the, the pond, you see the anaconda cage, now you see the iguana cage. I tell you what, things are coming together really quick, actually much quicker than I expected. So what guys, another amazing day down, still have some more to go. Uh, I, I couldn't be more happy with the way things are. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, we have a podcast. Of course, Stuart from Universal Rock was on the last podcast. If you'd like to subscribe, you can hit that right here. Right here is an entire playlist of vlogs if you wanna check that out. Here you can subscribe to the vlog channel. Turn your post notifications on for me. Have a wonderful day. Remember to be kind to someone and I promise, I'll See you guys tomorrow.